Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is portfolio questions on education and lifelong learning. And in order to get as many people in as possible, I would be grateful for short and succinct questions and answers to match, please. Question number one, Angus MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government what progress it's making in expanding Gaelic medium education out with Gaelic speaking areas. Minister Alistair Allen. The Scottish Government has made good progress with Gaelic medium education, with a rise in the number of pupils entering Primary 1 from 386 in 2007 to 556 in 2014. With support from the Gaelic Schools Capital Fund, we have witnessed the expansion of Gaelic medium education across Scotland as new Gaelic schools and units open or expand in Aberfeldy, Beaumore, Cumbernauld, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Port William, Glenurquhart, Inverness, Irvine, Oban, Portree, Salon and Thurso, with further developments planned for Fort William, Glasgow, Portree, Kilmarnock and Inverness. Angus MacDonald. I thank the Minister <coughs> for his reply. I uh, certainly welcome the, the new figures and the inclusion of uh, Gaelic medium provision in the new education bill. However, it has come to my notice that despite some local authorities having produced their own Gaelic language plans, uh, some, including my own at Falkirk Council, have only given lip service to their own plan. Uh, failing on many of the targets and objectives, despite being happy to take the economic gains, such as hosting the Royal National Mod in 2008, which injected £1.5 million to the local economy. What can the Scottish Government and Board of Gaelic do to ensure local authorities pay more than lip service to Gaelic, ensuring our fragile Indigenous language survives? Minister. Well, I know the member has, has raised these many issues uh, around Gaelic uh, with me through his role as convener of the cross-party group on Gaelic. Local authorities across Scotland, it's fair to say, have uh, on the whole helped to make good progress in delivering support for uh, Gaelic, but we acknowledge there is a still an awful lot of work to be done by all public bodies. Uh, the National Plan for Gaelic clearly demonstrates the areas uh, that have the potential to support the language going forward uh, and names the public bodies that can help deliver these. Supplementary, Liam MacArthur. Thank you very much, Deputy President. Officer. The Minister will be aware that the uh, Council I represent is the smallest local authority in Scotland and, uh, like all other education departments across the country, is under serious budget pressures at the moment. What assurances can the Minister give that the changes uh, being introduced will not result uh, in uh, resources being uh, taken away from the provision of other vital educational uh, provision within uh, Orkney and, indeed, other uh, similar Minister? councils? Well, it certainly won't re result uh, in uh, resources being taken away from English. Uh, I think the, uh, the resource uh, devoted nationally to the provision of education and other services in English uh, dwarfs uh, that provided to Gaelic by, by a fact that I can't even work out. But uh, I would say that I am conscious in Orkney and Shetland in particular, uh, it's one of the few areas or two of the few areas in Scotland uh, which never had a, a Gaelic tradition. I am aware of the importance of the uh, Arcadian and Shetlandic uh, Scots tradition, the Northern tradition, Norse tradition, uh, and through things like the provision of Scots language coordinators in schools, one of whom you will know, uh, or whom the member will know as an Arcadian, uh, we are very supportive indeed of those cultural traditions too. Thank you. Question number two, Kenny McCaskill. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government, in light of the tragic event at Liberton High School in 2014, what additional support and resources have been and will be provided to the school? Minister Alistair Allen. The Scottish Government has been working closely with the City of Edinburgh Council. Uh, we are also committed uh, to providing support of up to £1.6 million towards the cost of replacing the gymnasium uh, where the tragic event took place. Kenny McCaskill. Uh, I very much welcome that. All associated with the school are grateful for the assistance given. It has been trying times, but great courage has been shown by all. Uh, due to PFI PPP liabilities incurred by the previous Labour Council, uh, funds for development at the school through the Council are limited, uh, and therefore any uh, support, whether for infrastructure or indeed for counselling, is very much welcome. I do not know whether any lessons have been learned uh, regarding counselling but perhaps the Minister can confirm that the support given, uh, both in cash and in kind, will continue. Minister? Well, while I can't uh, comment uh, any further on uh, the Health and Safety Authority's uh, response to this situation, because there's no indication to me as to, to when that uh, response uh, will be published, uh, I certainly can uh, confirm that the ongoing support that there has been, uh, both in terms of infrastructure and also in terms of uh, cooperation with the local authority are, I think, both the local authority and the government 
uh, we both strongly feel are, are essential to, to moving forward uh, from this uh, uh, deeply tragic situation. Uh, supplementary, Liz Smith. Uh, could I ask the, the Cabinet Secretary whether there has been any concern over uh, the question of school buildings being included in an HMI inspection report? Minister. The, these, these issues uh, have uh, been raised in the past, uh, although uh, it, is, uh, it is nonetheless the case that the uh, assessment of the, the condition of school buildings does remain a matter for local authorities. Thank you. Question number three, Cameron Buchanan. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what will they do to improve literacy in schools following the recent results of the Scottish Survey of Literacy and Numeracy? Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. While the latest survey showed that Scottish pupils perform well, these results are not as good as they should be. They demonstrate the need to redouble efforts to ensure that every child can succeed in school and so gain the skills that they need for life. As a result, we are stepping up work to improve children's literacy. Education Scotland inspections will focus on raising attainment and literacy. Each school will be expected to demonstrate a very clear strategy for raising attainment in literacy. And we will work closely with partners to establish a national improvement framework to provide us with the information we need to show that children's skills in reading, writing, listening and talking are improving. And we and our partners will work with parents and carers to develop resources to support learning at home from the early years right through to secondary, uh, building on the Read, Write, Count campaign. And finally, President Officer, uh, round two of the Access to Education Fund with £1.5 million available to help reduce barriers to learning um, experienced by children from disadvantaged backgrounds uh, opened last week and in 2004 303 schools benefited from these grants. Thank you. Cameron Buchanan, could you check your microphone is raised please Mr Buchanan. Thank Sorry, you. thank you. Uh, thank you. I thank the Minister for her reply and in view of this does the Scottish Government plan to reform the testing of reading, writing and numeracy in schools? Cabinet Secretary. Some of the work that we will be taking forward uh, with all partners in education is in relation to a national performance framework. Um, and while the position of this government is not to reintroduce uh, things such as uh, national testing, uh, which is onerous on teaching staff and indeed children, uh, what we do need to address um, is the need for more intelligent use of information. Uh, we need more data about what's happening in the early years and in primary schools uh, so that we can identify issues earlier uh, and indeed uh, act upon the issues that are identified. And that is a very important uh, aspect of the work that we will take forward with our partners as we develop the national performance framework. Colin Beatty, supplementary, please. In response to the survey findings, Larry Flanagan, EIS General Secretary, commented, we increasingly see tired and hungry pupils coming to school Austerity-led measures do have an impact on performance, just as deprivation at home impacts on pupil attainment. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree? Cabinet Secretary. Um, yes, I do. The Joseph uh, Rowntree Foundation um, have done a very uh, detailed and compelling uh, piece of work uh, that looks at the link um, of uh, poverty and uh, attainment. Um, we know that there are £12 billion of cuts uh, coming down the line uh, from the Conservative government. Um, we know uh, that austerity penalises the poor and has a disproportional impact on women and, crucially, uh, children. Um, uh, and that is you know, one of the reasons why, as a government, uh, we are both focusing on um, our endeavours within and out with the classroom. Thank you. Question number four, Alex Ferguson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask Scottish Government what measures it is taking to improve literary standards in primary schools. Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, we launched the Scottish Attainment Challenge in February this year, supported by a £100 million Attainment Scotland Fund over four years to drive forward improvements in educational outcomes in Scotland's most disadvantaged communities. The Attainment Fund will initially be targeted at primary schools in local authorities with the biggest concentration of households in deprived areas and will have a relentless focus on literacy, numeracy uh, and health and wellbeing. 
Our Raising Attainment for All programme, launched in June 2014, uh, now covers 23 local authorities and 180 schools, uh, including 155 primary schools. Uh, and this programme is delivering a targeted approach uh, to improvements to schools. Alec Ferguson. Well, I'm grateful to the Cabinet Secretary for her response, but the 2014 Scottish Survey of Literacy and Numeracy that my colleague Cameron Buchanan has just referred to was quite clear in identifying that key literacy standards amongst school children have fallen, whereas the Standing Literacy Commission set up by the Scottish Government has claimed that these standards have improved. So can I simply ask the Cabinet Secretary how she explains that apparent contradiction? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, the Standing Literacy Commission is a, an independent commission um, and reflects a, a broad, broad, broad range uh, of measurements across uh, Scottish uh, education. Um, we know that national qualifications, uh, for example, we're seeing you know, an increase um, in pass rates. Uh, we know literacy is embedded in national qualifications. Um, we know that in terms of PISA results, for example, that we've uh, halted the decline in our international standards. London. But uh, let me be clear to Mr Ferguson and other members in this chamber that the results from the literacy survey uh, do indeed fall short of our aspirations for all of our children. And while the majority of children are doing well, I mean, we know that eight out of ten children uh, read well or very well, uh, these results quite simply are not as good as they should be. Uh, and we will indeed uh, redouble our efforts to address this. Question number five, Gordon MacDonald. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government how much was spent refurbishing schools in Edinburgh in 2014-15. Minister Alistair Allen. The Scottish Government does not hold this information. It would be for the relevant local authority, in this case the City of Edinburgh Council, to provide the member with that information. However, through the Scotland Schools for the Future programme, this government uh, is undertaking significant investment in Scotland's school estate. In Edinburgh, the Scottish government will provide funding of up to £41.9 million for the replacement of James Gillespie's High School, Borough Muir High School and St John's Primary School. Uh, and this is uh, in addition to the £1.6 million pounds uh, around Liberton High School that uh, I mentioned some moments ago. Thank you. Gordon MacDonald. Uh, I thank the Minister for that answer. The Wester Hills Education Centre in my constituency was built in 1978 and during 2014 a phased refurbished programme was started including a new roof, windows, cladding and electrical upgrade. Does the Minister agree that ensuring pupils are taught in modern, well-designed schools is important in ensuring that children get the best possible education? Minister. Well, of course, uh, as the member would expect me to say, the responsibility for these areas uh, does lie with the local authority, uh, but the Scottish Government has shown its commitment uh, in uh, a big way over uh, recent years uh, in reducing the number of uh, children uh, in schools that are, are not in adequate condition. The proportion of schools uh, which uh, were in good or satisfactory condition uh, in 2001 in Scotland was 61%. Uh, in 2014, that figure had risen to 83%. And the, the three schools that I mentioned in Edinburgh are testimony uh, to the Scottish Government's commitment to continuing to improve the school estate. Yeah. Supplementary, please. Cameron Buchanan. Thank you. Uh, what plans has the Scottish Government made to meet the demands of the growing population in Edinburgh schools? Minister. Well, again, uh, I, I would, and uh, you would expect me to again, the member would expect me again to repeat that the statutory education authority is the education authority, um, but the fact that uh, £1.8 billion has been committed through the Schools for the Future uh, programme throughout Scotland uh, is an indication of the fact that we take seriously the importance uh, of uh, our young people uh, being educated in buildings that are adequate for that task. Question number six, Jim Eady. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to promote the study of computer science in schools and other educational establishments. Minister Alistair Allen. Well, I thank the member not only for his question but for his recent letter on this subject. We have uh, invested £400,000 uh, over two years from 2013 to 2015 in the Plan C project which provides pre free professional development for secondary school computing science teachers. Education Scotland provides advice, guidance and support for computing science teaching and learning in both primary and secondary schools. 
And from 2015 to 16, reflecting a key priority of developing Scotland's young workforce, college outcome agreements will outline the steps being taken by colleges to expand their STEM offer, including courses related to computing science. In this academic year and next, three of Scotland's universities will participate in a pilot operated by the Scottish Funding Council to recruit additional undergraduate students to ICT courses, including computing science. Jim Eady. I thank the Minister for that answer. While the Scottish Government has included computing studies as one of the priority subjects for the postgraduate diploma in education, the teaching quali qualification for all teachers, is he aware that there is real concern among the academic community, notwithstanding uh, the commitments he's made today, about what they see as a decline in the status and recognition given to computing science, which is reflected in a falling number of teachers in computing science, the closure of some computing science departments in our schools and the withdrawal of computing courses at Scottish universities that provide appropriate computing qualifications. In providing the policy direction and leadership which I know he and the Cabinet Secretary is committed to providing, will he meet with me and other interested parties to discuss what further progress can be made? Minister. Well, I am, of course, uh, more than happy to, to meet the member uh, about the issues he raise, raises. And while it is certainly the case to say that uh, uh, there has been, uh, between, uh, I think, 2008 and 2014, a decline in the number uh, of young people uh, taking SCQF Level 5 uh, in computing science, there has, of course, been uh, a rise at higher uh, and uh, at advanced higher. Uh, this is uh, an area which the, the government takes very seriously uh, in ensuring that targets uh, are set for uh, our teacher training uh, uh, universities, the teacher initial education universities, to ensure that the teachers uh, are there uh, for the future for this vital area of uh, our uh, uh, education system and our economy. Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. There seems to be some confusion in local authorities and the difference between computer science teachers who cover programming and advanced skills and computer literacy teachers who cover word processing and administration skills. Is the Minister willing to issue guidance to clarify the situation so we can get an, actu an accurate picture of the spread of science, computer science teachers in Scotland and start to address the fallen numbers which has left um, some areas with schools with no computer science teacher at all. Minister. Well, Education Scotland's technology review recognises a number of the points that the member has made, not least the important distinction uh, he, he makes uh, between, uh, uh, between computer literacy uh, and computing uh, science. Um, I think it's important to, to stress again the fact that uh, we did uh, see efforts uh, in the last year to increase the number of uh, people becoming uh, computing science teachers. We did see an increase, although a modest one I concede, uh, in the number of students on the computing science PGDE course up from 17 to 22, with a target intake for this year up to 37. I do take seriously the points that are made uh, about ensuring that the supply of teachers is there for the future. Many thanks. Question number seven, Rob Gibson. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what public agencies are doing to promote outdoor education for both urban and rural pupils and with what success. Thank you, Minister. Fiona McLeod. Thank you. Outdoor learning is promoted in a number of policies, for example, within the GTCS standards for registration, <clears throat> while Education Scotland supports practitioners in every sector to build confidence and competence in outdoor learning. A range of public agencies, including Sports Scotland and local authorities, provide and promote outdoor education for children all over Scotland. Since 2012-13, we have invested £1.9 million in Inspiring Scotland to deliver the Go to Play programme to further engage children in active and outdoor play. And on, the th on Thursday, the 2nd of April, Inspiring Scotland launched our £300,000 Play Ranger Fund. This will allow the Play Ranger model to roll out nationally to upskill outdoor play activity and knowledge across Scotland. Thank you, Rob Gibson. I thank the Minister for that answer. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, opening the refurbished visitor centre at Ben A National Nature Reserve last Saturday uh, and other places like the RSPB visitor centre at Forsenard and my constituency are a considerable distance from large numbers of pupils. It's in terms of being able to encourage these pupils to, to experience the outdoors that I'm asking this question because 
many others uh, further away from those places should be able to enjoy these tremendous facilities and learn about our nature and environment. Thank you. Fiona McLeod. It's lovely to hear from Rob Gibson about the wonderful work that's being done by organisations within his constituency. And he might be interested to learn on the findings of Stirling University's most recent research on outdoor education. From 2006 to 2014, there's been a 50% increase in outdoor provision for primary school pupils in Scotland. And amongst uh, the, the reports on uh, the advantage of this is that teachers are seeing increased pupil engagement when they uh, are part of outdoor education. Thank you. Question number eight, Ian Gray. I ask the Scottish Government what assessment is made of the reasons for falling literacy and numeracy in schools. Cabinet Secretary. While the most recent Scottish survey of literacy and numeracy found that most children are doing well, as the Scottish Government has already acknowledged, the results are not as good as they should be. Accordingly, we are redoubling our efforts to address this and, in particular, to close the attainment gap. Uh, part of this work will focus on gaining a better understanding of what influences attainment in literacy and numeracy and the role played by disadvantage. Ingrid. I did hear the Cabinet Secretary describe uh, her response to the statistics to colleagues who asked about the survey earlier. Uh, but my question was indeed about reasons and responsibility. We all visit schools, I think, and find them full of dedicated, passionate teachers and bright uh, young people eager to learn. So this can't be their fault. But literacy and numeracy standards are in decline, whereas we see them in other developed countries improving. The Cabinet Secretary's government have been running education for eight years. Surely she must have some view as to what has gone wrong. Could she share it Cabinet with Secretary. Well, indeed, I mean, the literacy survey results, I think, uh, indicate another, a number of issues. Um, in this chamber, we have discussed and debated at length uh, the role of disadvantage. Uh, we have all debated and discussed uh, in various forums uh, the challenges around closing the attainment gap, which is indeed uh, the number one uh, educational priority of this government. And that's why um, that since the survey was undertaken uh, this time last year, the government has undertaken a very ambitious uh, programme of reform, uh, not least around the Scottish Attainment Challenge and the £100 million uh, Scottish Attainment Fund very targeted uh, and very focused on addressing uh, disadvantage. There are other issues uh, to do with transition um, that we need to do better in supporting children in that transition between primary uh, and secondary. Uh, and of course, we need to do far more to address some of the issues um, with boys in, in primary schools. But what I would say to you know, Mr Gray is that uh, under Labour, uh, there was a decline in reading literacy, uh, according to the OECD PISA results. And under Labour, they failed to reduce the attainment gap. But that, of course, uh, is in the past. And some would argue that Mr Gray and his party are in the past. And what I'm interested in now is in the present and in the future. And we, since last year, have unveiled a very ambitious programme of work. And indeed, in response to these literacy results, we've outlined a number of uh, very ambitious measures, such as the National Performance Framework, because we won't rest until all our children get the very best start in their life, and literacy and numeracy skills are at the absolute core of a child's education. Mary Scanlon. Uh, Audit Scotland confirmed that there is no consistent approach to testing or assessment from P1 to S3. Neither is there any evaluation on the relationship between spending and raising attainment. How will the government's ambitions and their national performance framework address these two issues? Cabinet Secretary. Well, if um, Mrs Scanlon had, I suppose, listened to my earlier response to uh, one of her colleagues, uh, one of the issues that I said was a very important factor in the national performance framework was having better, uh, more comprehensive information at an earlier stage uh, in a child's education career. But we have to use information intelligently. I don't want to overburden children uh, or indeed teachers. Uh, but we do need... Uh, 
uh, better information uh, about what's happening in our education system um, earlier on. And indeed, one of the reasons that this government introduced uh, the literacy and numeracy surveys was indeed to get a more comprehensive picture of what's happening so that we know what's happening and we can therefore uh, act upon it. But I have to say to Mrs Scanlon that unlike the Tories, this government will not be driven uh, by ideology. Uh, we will do what works and we will, we will be led and informed uh, by the evidence. Uh, first and foremost, Arty, please. we will look at the evidence about what supports children and therefore uh, move forward. Arty, please. And what we won't be doing, Arty. Mrs Scanlon, of course, is free schools, where we see schools that are company limited by guarantee, where we see free schools that are exempt from the national curriculum uh, in England, and free schools where teachers are not required to be qualified or registered. And tell me, how will that improve standards? What we are focused on Order, is absolutely please. improving standards. And Scottish education um, is good. We have much to be proud for. But what we will not do, Mrs Scanlon... Minister, will not can you speak through the chair? Can I we will, along, not, please. we will not demure, presiding officer, from where we have shortcomings in our education system. We will look fairly and squarely, both at the strengths and indeed the weaknesses where things have to improve. And that's what we're doing. We will lead a very honest debate about what is next for Scottish education. Yeah. Question number nine, Nanette Mellon. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what support it pr provides to disabled college students. Cabinet Secretary. In its guidance to colleges, the Scottish Funding Council has uh, made clear that improving access for uh, disabled people is a national priority. Uh, to support this, the Funding Council is investing uh, a record £100 million across the sector uh, to ensure that colleges are resourced to meet the needs of disabled students. Uh, additionally, eligible learners studying higher education at college are entitled to financial assistance through uh, the Disabled Students Allowance and those in further education courses are eligible for support through the additional support needs for learning allowance. Uh, the Funding Council continues to work closely with the Equality Challenge Unit, Enable Scotland, Colleges Development Network and other partners to improve outcomes and support for this group of learners. Nanette Mill. Thank you. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response. Um, during 2013-14, 6,270 applications were received for disabled student allowance an increase of 8.6% on the previous year. Um, can the Minister tell me how many of these applications were rejected and, and what um, is the proposed expected uptake of this allowance in time going, years going forward? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Mrs. Scanlon asks, uh, sorry, uh, Mrs. Uh, Milne asked questions in relation to um, higher education and the disabled students um, allowance, uh, which is awarded by the uh, Student Awards Agency uh, for Scotland. It's important to say that this is a non-income um, assessed uh, allowances. Um, I will indeed uh, write to Nanette Milne with regards to the specific factual points uh, that she uh, raises. Uh, we did have a review of uh, uh, DSA in Scotland. Um, there was a survey also carried out by NUS uh, in July 2013 indicating that uh, on the whole uh, disabled student allowances um, is working well um, but I will reply to uh, Mrs Milne uh, directly uh, in terms of the factual information that she seeks. Question number 10, Michael McMahon. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what recent improvements has made to student support. Cabinet Secretary. This academic year, the college student support budget is at a record level of uh, £105 million, pounds, uh, meaning that students can now receive bursaries of up to £93.03 pounds and three pence per week, uh, the best level anywhere in the UK. Uh, in higher education, those students uh, most in need uh, are now entitled to a minimum income of £7,500 through a combination of loans and bursaries. As Mr McMahon will be aware, uh, unlike the UK Government, we committed to maintain the Education Maintenance Allowance Scheme, um, investing nearly £30 million in the current financial year, and in line with the First Minister's commitment to help more young people access and stay on in education, we are currently considering uh, how we will extend the scheme. Michael McMahon. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response. But is the Cabinet Secretary aware of the recent information published in the Financial Times which indicates that funding for student grants in Scotland has fallen as support for loans has risen. 
and that Scotland now has the lowest rate of grant in Western Europe, that since 2007 spending on income-related student grant in Scotland has almost halved in real terms, and that Scotland is the only part of the UK where borrowing is highest among students from poorer backgrounds. Does she agree that this research shows that the net effects of Scottish Government policies is a resource transfer from low-income to high-income households, and does the Cabinet Secretary believe that these findings are uh, research which reflects a progressive agenda? Cabinet Secretary. I think Mr McMahon and Labour would have far more credibility on this issue if the leader of the Labour Party hadn't spent all his career uh, opposing uh, free higher education and been a proponent um, of uh, tuition fees. And, you know, for the record, it is important uh, to recognise that there has been no reduction um, in bursaries. And indeed, uh, for the record, when you compare uh, average student loan debt in Scotland to the rest of the UK, uh, the average for Scotland uh, is indeed uh, £7,500 uh, compared to uh, £20,000 uh, in uh, the, the rest of the UK or uh, England uh, and in particular. And in terms of of our offer uh, to students. We, as I mentioned in my answer, um, made um, a commitment to a minimum income guarantee. Our manifesto uh, spoke of £7,000. Uh, we've delivered a minimum income, income guarantee of £7,500. And it's important also to recognise that there has been a 23% increase in the value of the average student support package uh, for 2013-14. Thank you. If questions and answers could be shorter, we might make a bit more progress. Number 11, Christian Allard. To ask the Scottish Government how local authorities are using the funding that was provided to maintain teacher numbers. Cabinet Secretary. The Government is committed to raising attainment and closing the attainment gap. Uh, we have been clear that we do not believe that reducing teacher numbers or increasing the pupil-teacher ratio will achieve that. Uh, that's why we have offered all 32 local authorities uh, £51 million to support teacher numbers, uh, which they have all accepted. Uh, this includes uh, an extra £10 million uh, over and above last year's settlement and commits local authorities to maintaining uh, their teacher numbers and pupil-teacher ratio at 2014 levels for 2015-16. With these broad parameters, however, it is for local authorities uh, to determine how best to distribute the funding uh, to ensure that they, they are able to meet their commitment to maintain teacher numbers. Christian Allard. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the answer. What I was looking for as well is to have a reaction from the Cabinet Secretary that the funding which is allocated for teachers' numbers is going to be used for this. Uh, and, and what thing it, be, it could be used for, it could be to recruit teachers far, from far and wide. I know some local authorities have done that. Uh, would they be allowed to use that money for this and not using it for something else than education? Angela Constance. Um, I mean, as the member is aware, local authorities are responsible for teacher recruitment and employment, uh, but it is encouraging to note that a number of local authorities are, uh, as Mr Allard suggests, proactively exploring potential labour markets uh, both within uh, and out with Scotland. Uh, the General Teaching Council for Scotland, which is the independent regulatory uh, body for the teaching profession, is responsible for ensuring that only teachers who meet the relevant high standards can register to teach in Scotland. Uh, but the GTCS is currently reviewing its registration and probationary service requirements uh, to build a, a greater degree of flexibility into them, um, but at the same time ensure high standards are maintained. Question number 12, Graeme Day. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how it will improve the governance of higher education institutions. Uh, Cabinet Secretary. Higher education makes an important contribution to our economy and Scottish public life, in which we are investing over £1 billion this year and next. Uh, the programme for government highlighted the importance of good governance in our universities and included a commitment to uh, an introduction of a higher education governance bill. Uh, consultation on the bill ended on the 30th of January this year. Uh, informed by the findings, legislation is being developed to uh, modernise and strengthen governance further embedding the principles of democracy and accountability in our higher education system. And the Scottish Government intends to introduce the Higher Education Governance Bill to Parliament uh, before the end of the current session. Thank you, Graeme Day.
A Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the university and college unions' proposals for elected chairs of governing bodies, for those bodies to include trade union and student representation, and for a definition of academic freedom to be agreed. I accept the process that we are going through, which she highlighted, means that she is constrained in giving undertakings as such, but I wonder whether she would agree these proposals are worthy of serious consideration. Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I do agree that these proposals are worthy of consideration. The member is correct to um, highlight that there is a particular process that the government needs to go through with the presiding uh, officer, and therefore there is not much further I can add in terms of uh, the detail of the bill until it has uh, been to the presiding officer and um, introduced uh, to Parliament. Uh, what I can say is that the views of all stakeholders shared through the consultation uh, on the Higher Education Governance Bill uh, were examined very carefully. Carefully, and these views and ideas will indeed influence uh, the final form of provisions for the bill. Thank you. Question number 13 by Mary Fees has not been lodged and an explanation has been provided. Question number 14, John Mason. Hey, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what recent discussions it has had with Glasgow City Council regarding children with an autistic spectrum disorder being sent to mainstream schools. Minister Alistair Allen. The Scottish Government has not had any recent discussions with Glasgow City Council regarding children with an autistic spectrum disorder attending mainstream schools. Uh, the Standards in Schools uh, Act 2000 places a duty on education authorities to provide education in a mainstream school unless specific exemptions apply, exe exceptions, I beg your pardon, apply. These are if mainstream schooling would not be suitable for the child in question, Placing the child uh, would be likely to be disruptive to the education of the other pupils, or placing the child in question would incur unreasonable levels of public expenditure. John Mason. Yeah, I very much thank the Minister for that uh, response. And uh, it's certainly the feeling, and I wonder if he shares the concern of some of my constituents, that these specific exceptions are being met. The school is not suitable for some of the pupils. It would be disruptive to the other pupils. And yet Glasgow insists on sending them to a mainstream school. Minister? Well, I, I can't comment on the individual circumstances or, or school uh, that the member refers to. Uh, what I can say is that, uh, as I've mentioned, the, the Act is very specific uh, about the circumstances uh, concerned uh, and that uh, uh, the Act does place a duty uh, on education authorities uh, to provide education in a mainstream setting, but only if that is in the best interests of the child. And uh, the, the three circumstances that I've set out uh, are the circumstances which any education authority would have to have cognizance of. Neil Finlay. The same thing is happening in my area in West Lothian, and the reality is this is, this is a direct consequence of the underfunding of local government. Now, this is very, very serious. Children, are not, along, children are not being placed for financial reasons, I believe, across Scotland, and the government really has to look at this because parents will not put up with it. Minister. Well, the, the member may be in a better position than I am uh, to know about the internal workings of the local authority concerned, but uh, all I can say is that the, all I can say Order, is that the Act is extremely specific that the best interest of the child are what are concerned. And as far as the local authority funding is concerned, as the member well knows, despite the pressures placed on the Scottish Government from another place, this government, this government in Scotland continues to maintain its commitment to funding local authorities despite all the pressures upon it. Question number 15, Mark Griffin. To ask the Scottish Government when the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning last met Education Scotland and what was discussed. Cabinet Secretary. I met with Bill Maxwell, Chief Executive of Education Scotland, on Thursday, the 23rd of April, uh, at quarter past one. We discussed a range of topics which included progress in the implementation of Curriculum for Excellence, uh, the Developing the Young Workforce Programme, and Education Scotland's current consultation on the future development of inspection. Mark Griffin. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Can I ask? if she is aware of the concerns in the, th the teaching profession over Education Scotland's withdrawal of the national contract to supply glow materials, twig and tig tag in Scottish schools, which are a much needed science resource. How does the Minister plan on addressing the concerns of over 700 teachers who have signed an online petition and the impact this will have on science teaching in our schools? Cabinet Secretary. 
I agree with the member that resources for science teachers are very, very important and we are certainly reviewing uh, the position uh, and indeed um, Dr Allen has been in discussions uh, with representatives from Education Scotland uh, to ensure that science teachers do indeed have the right resources available and uh, we are looking at some um, other arrangements uh, to ensure that some of the resources mentioned by, by Mr Griffin uh, are indeed uh, continue to be available. Many thanks. That concludes questions. Now I will allow a few moments for members to change seats before we move to next business.